We got a legendary sequel equivalent to Top Gun Maverick in machine learning a few days ago, and the machine learning scholars sure are eating good these past few weeks. While the first one, Ken, was kind of bold in aiming to replace MLP, this time however, we have a good old trusty tool in the shed getting upgraded. From LSTM to a new and mighty XLSTM sure for extended long short term memory. It is also written by the same author, Sepp. Who has also been shilling XLSTM ever since February, which you can find some clues here and there on various sources, mentioning how he claimed that XLSTM is better than Mamba, with absolutely nothing to back it up during the time when Mamba was rising to fame. But now, as the XLSTM paper has been published, we can finally see what saw in his XLSTM experiments and know if he's high on copium or not. What's interesting about XLSTM is that it technically proposed two different LSTM architectures, one's called Scalar LSTM and the other is called Matrix LSTM. Then they can be optionally joined together to create an XLSTM block. But why two architectures? Well, due to the nature of LSTMs, the problems cannot be simply solved with just one architecture and some sort of trade-off has to be picked. Something that's really unique to RNN, or more specifically LSTM, is that each hidden block relies on the output of a previous hidden block. This is called memory mixing and it is incredibly inefficient due to the need for sequential processing. So while transformers can quickly get the entire output with a matrix multiplication, LSTM would have to calculate the output of the individual hidden states sequentially, which makes LSTM slow to a point where it is pretty much unstable. Scalable. So to overcome this, MLSTM abandoned memory mixing and instead picked up something called matrix memory which made LSTMs parallelizable. By also sprinkling exponential gating on top, this solved the old LSTM problem where it'll struggle to revisit a stored value when a more similar vector is found. With how MLSTM is designed, its residual block can then be structured similarly to state space models. On the other hand, abandoning memory mixing might be a waste as it is also LCM's key strength that made it stand out in the first place. Even though it does fail miserably sometimes when trying to revisit values, LSTM was still peak until Transformer was introduced. It was pretty much the best architecture in reinforcement learning back in the days, like the Alpha Star model for StarCraft 2 and OpenAI's Dota 2 AI that beat the best professional teams back in 2019 are all built upon LSTM. It excels perfectly at learning abstractions like semantic information. And it was good, like how it fixed the vanishing gradient problem that RNN had by using constant error carousel and gating, but it wasn't perfect due to the drawbacks I mentioned earlier. So as LSTM incorporates the exponential gating that MLSTM also has and consequently created a new memory mixing technique to improve the Alzheimer's that LSTM had, and its residual block had to be arranged in a similar fashion to transformers which looked like this. While using SLSTM would also make mean that it is not parallelizable, it still, well, hopefully inherits the strong learning capacities and attributes that we will see later in the benchmarks. As you can see here, for these labels, 0 to 1 uses only SLSTM, 1 to 0 uses only MLSTM, and 1 to 1 has a 1 to 1 ratio of SLSTM and MLSTM. So by using a different mix of each component, the researchers further tested different types of combination and see how it affects its performance. Then it is compared to other popular architectures like Transformers in Llama, State Space Model in Mamba, RWKV which is also RNN inspired architecture, Hyena, Retention, and the original LSTM. And by a pretty decent margin, XLSTM and LSTM both outperforms all others across the board with the most success on the mod arithmetic benchmarks as it is an operation only LSTM models are able to learn. So you can see Transformers or other methods failed miserably here. On the other hand, it is interesting to see that XLSTM with only MLSTM performs subpar than other XLSTM structures, as MLSTM is also the one that removed LSTM's key attribute which is memory mixing. It also failed the mod arithmetic benchmark
Lord, which is an interesting observation for sure. The most interesting takeaway from this though is that from these toy benchmarks, the classic LSTM still outperforms most of the other architectures. However, later you will see it fails to scale up. But yes, LSTM is actually good to an extent. So after running through the toy benchmarks, they scaled the experiments up to train them for language modeling tasks, which is the holy grail in AI right now by training them on 15 billion tokens from the Slim Pajama dataset. The results are very good with XLSTM 1 to 0 and XLSTM 7 to 1 outperforming GPT-3 and Llama 3 by a small margin, graded by perplexity, aka how well the model predicts the output. However, this is rather small dataset and a small model size with 350 million parameters for GPT-3 and around 400 million for Llama and the XLSTMs. But with this being so promising, the researchers are tempted to scale up even more. However, they did something really clever first and asked themselves, are XLSTMs really that good or can LSTM do the same thing? Which made them dive in deeper to confirm whether or not what they proposed in XLSTM actually helped language modeling by starting the test with LSTM and slowly adding the changes on every run to see if there are any improvements. And it turns out that there is indeed an improvement and in fact, the original LSTM would perform horribly on language modeling tasks. And then they got to the real juicy research. Training model sizes ranging from 125 million parameters, 350 million, 760, and even 1.3 billion parameters, all trained with 300 billion tokens from Slim Pajama. First, they tested on sequence length extrapolation. Here's how the tests work. All models are trained on context length of 248 tokens and then tested for context length up to 16,384, which is eight times its original size. Then the model performance are measured by perplexity. And to my surprise, XLSTM performs 37 times better than Llama and 1.5 times better than Mamba, which is really impressive. This signals that if XLSTM is successfully adapted, context window might actually become dirt cheap, since models don't need to be trained on large context window and can be extrapolated 8 or even more times as the perplexity barely budged the longer it was extrapolated. So 1 million context window can be trained at the price of 100k tokens context window or even much less if we know the scaling law. But to a much bigger surprise, XLSTM without SLSTM, which is the one that retains LSTM's key feature, performed on par with a 7 to 1 ratio on length extrapolation. This might mean two completely opposite things. The first one is that SLSTM barely made any difference and might as well not be used since it would be way cheaper not to use it as the perplexity difference is only 0.1, right? But second, it might mean that the models are not big enough to see any notable performance increase in the case where SLSTM should give a better leverage than without using it. So I guess we'll only see it when someone made a 10 billion model size experiment for fun. But when tested on memory capacities, Transformer easily outperforms all others followed by XLSTM with and without MLSTM component. And here's a table that tested the models on some standard LLM benchmarks, with bold being the best score and underlined as the second best. And now it gets even more interesting. While XLSTM do outperform others in many different instances, which is a great news by the way, if you do look closely, the bigger the models are, the worse the XLSTM with SLSTM performs. And instead, without it, it starts to perform even better the bigger it is. This scaling relations with context length extrapolations correlates negatively. So what I am getting to is, if XLSTM has SLSTM, it performs better when it comes to extrapolating context length, but without it, it performs better in standard quality benchmarks. I think this definitely poses a great research topic for people to find out in the future how they really scale. And my cope meter for XLSTM is a solid 2 out of 10, because this research do look really solid and really reminds me of the good old days that was three months ago when Mamba just came out. But I guess Sep. Hochreiter. Might actually be right this time, XLSTM did actually perform better than Mamba, but for Jamba, we might have to wait for a while. And I got to say, the depth of the ablation studies this research went through is just amazing. The amount of valuable insights it gave made me feel like this might as well be real. And maybe the large scale XLSTM experiment might just be around the corner. Just like today's sponsor On Demand that can help you efficiently scale your AI model deployments with an easy customization 
customization plugin library that can handle all kinds of advanced media types, this cutting edge platform as a service powered by RAG may just be something you need for your project or your business. On Demand offers a versatile playground with numerous language models, including the ability to import models directly from Hugging Face. With its easy to access plugin marketplace, you can create, publish, and even monetize your plugins, accessing a wide range of options developed by both the community and the On Demand team. With how convenient On Demand is to integrate with other tools, you can make your own AI endpoint by choosing an ideal model, connect different plugins from their plugin marketplace, and deploy it with an advanced direct system. Their plugin marketplace works a bit uniquely where it can be free but creators are rewarded per a certain amount of downloads. Creators can also publish their plugins and charge a premium for their plugin to be used by other users, with plugins ranging from stock analysis to social media extractors. There are also two types of plugins, chat and file. Chat plugins are what you incorporate into the playground to use alongside the language model, while file plugins are used alongside chat plugins and allow the user to import documents, photos, and videos. To complement this wide range of functionalities, they have high-performance computing available to ensure high-speed processing analysis with volume-based pricing that scales with usage, making it suitable for businesses of all sizes with different usage patterns and a diverse set of API offerings for various applications. Join the waitlist now using the link down in my description to get exclusive access to the on-demand platform, and thank you on-demand for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video today, you should also check out my newsletter where we break down the top research papers weekly, the goal of making it easy to read, fast to digest, and straight to the point. As I probably won't have enough time to cover all the incredible papers that are coming out with my videos, this would be a great alternative for you if you want to stay up to date with the latest research breakthroughs. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deegan, Alex Maurice, Megulim, Fifel, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.